Hi everyone, my name is Kari Malus Mullen and I'm going to do a workshop or a demonstration and based on uh, the exhibition that Riverside Print Group has uh, at the gallery at Preston Libraries here in Cambridge, Ontario. And we have had uh, an exhibition there since December 2021 and lots of this um, exhibition or our feature feature um, installation ended up being a thing we did as a collaboration between all the all the members we are nine members and we um, I think everyone has struggled during COVID and we had we lost our studio just right before COVID and we were so used to work together and we thought how are we going to do something for this show that shows that we are a group that we are a unit so what we decided we ended up making up nine lino plates or soft volume plates and this is two of them this was the one i started and this is one david scott started we got one each in a box and we made a print out of it and we sent the box with the plate to the next person uh, then uh, so i just carved this in my plate kind of to make it look like a ripped paper i'm not sure if you see that effect or not so then the next one was allowed to carve in it and made its its plate or its print then the next one and so forth uh, Lots of us ended up not doing uh, uh, carving into, not doing actually just liner prints like this is. These are. I have one more that I'm going to sh actually show the print on later. Uh, what we ended up doing, we ended up masking or doing monoprints, just we didn't need to carve into the plate. So um, one of the monoprints we did let us say this was based on a plate that a friend of mine uh, Betty Pratt made so she had it that way let us think of it with, without the hammer and it's like a tree or a pillar or something in the background and so it lots of room for other people to make stuff so what I did I thought it looked like a nail so I made the outline of a hammer in paper I inked up the whole plate since this was carved we got we got uh, uh, white where that was carved in because this is a relief plate uh, relief print and after I inked up the whole plate I put my white hammer on and was very careful not getting dirt on it and printed it so of course where the hammer was uh, it got white and uh, so that's something I would call a mask. I masked out the hammer. So that's something we did a lot. And other thing we sometimes did we used uh, we made up a stamp. I made up a stamp of this eagle and uh, I actually showing on another demonstration how you can make that eagle and you can actually make it doesn't need to be with ink like this could be with acrylic paint or even tempera then another thing we sometimes used was if we felt that our ink for the background for example was too dark if i thought that was too dark i could make a print out of that and then make a second before I inked it up again and we normally call that a ghost to see how much lighter this is than this and on some of the uh, prints I did that on purpose just because I wanted a lighter background then I tried to take the hammer off and make a print and you can see that's where because it was a white piece of paper there when I took it off, some of the ink was stuck to the paper, so we get a nice outline even of that. 
So it's lots of different things you could do. Some people even just uh, uh, paint it on the on the plate, or or took inked up and took a a piece of uh, uh, cork, or or you could cut up uh, an eraser, or you could use Q-tips and take it off. So that's called subtractive. So we can have an ad additive uh, uh, monoprint, or we can have a subtractive. Okay, so that was pretty much the different kind of methods we use for that print. But we also did something else. Following in the boxes, we had one paper for each box where everyone put a little bit imprint on. We all started with one plate, and then we printed that on one uh, one paper. Then the next ones put a little bit more on the same paper, the same paper, and so forth. And we all had different colors. So you can see how it went. So here, these leaves here, and this line here, that was mine. And today, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how you can make prints with leaves. And I'm sure lots of you guys have already done that. That's something we did in school. We had fun with it. But so I just kind of want to remind you how much fun that was and how you can use that. Excuse me. How you can use that to engage if you have if you're a teacher and have students, students in your class. Uh, how you can engage your kids if you are a kid watching. Maybe how you can engage your mom doing it with you. Okay, so what I'm going to start, this time I'm just using, this is a, 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 a linoleum and it's actually a, a floor li linoleum, but because I'm not going to uh, cut into it, um, it's fine, I don't need to heat it up or anything, it's hard, but it's fine. I just wanted a little bit bigger plate than what I had in my plexi and in my acetate. With plexiglass, acetate, fun foam, pretty much anything can be used, but I would suggest not to use paper because if you don't seal the paper, it really, the, the paint or ink tend to stick itself to the paper and sometimes you, it actually glue itself to the printing paper and you're not able to get it off. Another thing that is a good idea to do, especially for this print, because I'm going to print it, do some more, print it, do some more, is something called orientation. Orientation is really pretty much to be sure that the print get right in the middle of the paper each time. So here I have a piece of newsprint on my table, and I hinged my good paper the two pieces of tape, so if I put it down again, it comes exactly the same place. Then I'm going to, I have, have an outline here, but that's just from another print I did. But the paper is clean enough that I can do it again, use it again. So I'm going to just make an outline of this plate. And always when we use if it is lino, what it is, when we use it for printmaking, it will be our plate. That's kind of what we call it. So I'm just going to cross off this inside line so it doesn't confuse me. Okay, so. So I said we could use acrylic paint. If you use acrylic paint, we have to mix it or pin, uh, tempera. Mix it with something called slow dry blending medium. The, uh, this medium is made for for um, acrylic paint. I'm going to use oops relief ink. My ink is quite old and stiff, but that's okay. It will work. This is relief ink, so it's a water-based ink. You can use oil-based, you can use, they actually have oil-based ink now that's made with uh, vegetable oil. So even if it's, it's oil-based and you get um, 
it's the opening time and all the different things that, that, that the oil-based ink uh, is. You get it, but at the same time you can wash it off with uh, water and, and uh, dish soap. So much better. And also for this, especially to this one is very dry and stiff, but also even if it wasn't that dry and stiff, I would mix it with, with the dry blending medium because any water-based ink, the same with water-based uh, paint, has really short opening time. Opening time just means the time it takes from the ink when I put it on the paper to when it actually dries. I put a lot of these on just that's partly because my ink was so stiff. If you have a nice nice fresh ink you might just need a couple of drops. So I'm just mix it nicely together. Let's see how this will work. I think maybe I put a little bit too much on so I'm going to just add a little bit ink. quite messy so uh, gloves would always be a good idea okay let us see for this i am using a normal roller for for printmaking roller but again if you want to use um, be it more, uh, more cost efficient acrylic or tempera paint as I said with this will work but then I would suggest that you use this kind of roller it's a kind of dense foam roller and you can get it in hardware stores or dollar stores don't go with the extremely cheap really soft foam rollers because they don't really work that well okay let's see how it so I just roll it out and this is the same if it is if it is ink or paint roll it out quite thin and you see I have a, a magazine here just do that for having a nice surface to roll it on and if I get it really messy and don't want it on the back of my plate when I move it around I just go to a new page I actually think that's quite genius and it was not my idea I picked it up somewhere I think I picked it up at Instagram or something like that I'm not sure okay so now I am going to start to play around with my my leaves and you can use leaves, you can use feathers, you can use paper cutouts, you can use eggshells, you can use uh, fabric to make texture, anything pretty much. So I'm just going to put some leaves on. And this first set of leaves is meant as a mask. Remember what I talked about masks with the... Um, with, um, the hammer and the eagle so what I'm going to do I'm also going to use some of these I have some metal leaves here just put some I know it's winter now but I'm still using leaves so I actually had to cut off some leaves of one of my some of my house plants because of course I couldn't dig through the snow and get leaves from the ground okay so the first thing I'm going to do now I'm going to take one of my newsprint pieces because I actually want to use a little bit lighter color than this very dark black. So I'm just going to just to take off some of the color and so I actually will be using just what I talked to you about the ghost, the ghost imprint is what I'm going to use. So, 
I'm not sure how this will, so I took out quite a bit of uh, ink, as you see. I'm not sure how this is going to look. This is an experiment. It might work, it might not. But that's the fun part about this. Okay, so I put it right where my registration was. Registration. I think I called it orientation, but it's registration. Okay, so let us, I have a spoon here, and I'm going to just use the spoon instead of a press. And the problem with the spoon is that it actually, I can see the, oh no, it's a little bit better. You don't want to see too much of the movements of the spoon. So you don't want to see lines like that or circles. You just do have to use them very close together so you get the even pressure all over. Okay, let me see. How are we doing? Mm, not working too well, but it's doing something. But this is just the first step. If you use paint, I suggest that you don't use like the ghost as I did, but you actually use the first um, I'm going to use my I have an extra roller here. I'm just going to roll over it to try to get a little bit more even pressure. But um, the best would if you had the brayer. But the spoon works fine. So this is my, I'm going to do a little bit more over here. This is the good thing with having it hooked down like this. You can uh, hinge down, you can always go back down. Okay, so this is my first step, got a nice background. And I'm going to do my, uh, work on my plate a little bit more. For example, take the leaves out. And I don't know if you see it, but you see that beautiful leaf I got there? Well, that will make an imprint. Oh, I had some blue paint on the other. Even that, that might show. That's fine. So I'm just taking them off. And I'm going to, just so you can see the steps, I'm going to keep those two so I still get a couple of white spots. So I'm going to see, put them back into the registration, and just work on it. So of course now you will mostly do where it was white before when where it now is a ghost print. I didn't get it very well. Let us see. But again, this is just one step of many. And if you do it with paint, you can also do it with different colors as you go. As I said, you don't need the roller, you can just use the spoon. And here, these small leaves I had, I'm trying to get it nice around them so we get a nice edge on them. Okay, I don't know if you can see it from there, the small imprint on the leaves. Now I'm going to ink up the leaves itself. Oh, and I ended up just using leaves, didn't I? I was going to use some of these and I ended up not doing it. But as I said, you can use all kinds of different things. 
The new ink gap leaves, you always want to do it on the side, like the underside, the one that has most nerves. Get stuck to me. I'm going to have a small one here, see if that they work. This is very dirty work. So I have to be careful when I start to work with the oops, wrong way. With the paper again. So of course I could uh, just stamp that on the paper, but because it's so dirty I find if I lay it on the plate again, it's easier to keep the paper clean. So let us see. So now I'm actually making the leaves into a um, calligraphy. So I'm, uh, it's kind of like I'm using the leaves as the printing plate. Oh, so let us see how this worked. So, I could build up and build up here as many times as I wanted. And, but I'm just going to leave it there. So we have some leaves with lots of, lots of uh, um, ink on it, some with less. Here I have one with a left more white, and I did it with paint. Here I have one where I have more of the ghost prints. So you can do it exactly uh, I just say how you want to do it. It's really up to you. I'm going to just end this with one that I did for the show. So this is a plate that that uh, uh, my friend Laura Perrin uh, carved. So the, he, this was her plate number one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ink up this wheel and then I'm going to have leaves, leaves around it. So I'm making on, making a mask. So I'm just going to ink up right here where the uh, wheel is. And because I'm going to use the mask, it doesn't matter if I'm exact. Putting the mask on. Something like that. Okay, I didn't make a new registration, partly because I'm going to use a bigger paper. Okay, so here we go. So this is the paper I'm going to use, the same size. Same size as uh, my registration paper, so I don't need to make any new lines. Okay, so let us get a new good imprint. Can you start? I can use my spoon or a brayer if I had. Of course, uh, most of these things I do could also be uh, used in a press, but if you use what, uh, soft oleum like this, if you have a press, it won't work in the press. It will actually squeeze the soft oleum out and it will lose its shape. So with this, I actually think a spoon is the best. Okay, so there you see a nice wheel and this time I'm just going to continue work on the paper. But I want the outline of my print to show so I made a little mask of that, that's the biggest the plate was. 
And I'm going to start to just print up some leaves. So I'm going to put one here. The small one here. Another big one here. And again, if I wanted them really light, I could put some and just put them in, um, printing them something else first. I'm going to just put another paper on top. And I'm going to and I'm going to take them out. And here I could, what I did on my print for Preston, I actually cut some of the leaves so it looked like it was behind, behind the, the wheel. So I'm going to do that. I might even cut them to the seeds on each side of the wheel. bit tricky it would be good to have a pair of yeah something to help yourself with not just your fingers let's see if this will work Oh, that's really, really well. And I did not do any of my leaves as ghosts, so they got all quite strong. But that's the process. You can, you can make some strong, some less strong. Take my... And here you have a little bicycle ride in the fall or in the spring or whenever. Okay, we could do a winter one with snowflakes, I guess, I guess. But today, this is what I did. I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. I hope you will would encourage you to maybe see if you do this with your children or with your students. Maybe you can take them with you and they can see if they can find the different, different techniques that they, they, uh, they did. Okay, have a wonderful day. Hope to see you in the gallery.